This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Okay, back to school, back to school. In the time-honored traditions of America, bright red cards are called pony cars because of their reputation as playthings for schoolboys. Wow. Wow, yellow models are jackass cars because only morons drive them. <laughs> hey, my old art teacher drove a yellow car and she was awesome. A certain German woman I know, whether aware of it or not, deliberately drives a particularly flashy yellow vehicle around. You know a German woman in Japan? That's interesting. Apparently, she very much enjoys the compliments she gets from colleagues at work. Usually some variation of, it really suits you. In other words, a stupid car like that is just about right for a dumb blonde. Wow. You are very rude, even in your internal monologues. But she hasn't caught on to the fact that she's being mocked, so, and I have tactfully decided not to inform her either. Just like with women who get flattered with when someone tells them, your dress does wonders for your figure, it's pretty tough to let them know after the fact that she's not really being complimented. But sometimes fiends like that can come back to bite you when you least expect it. Okay. Hmm? Is this the, the German blonde? Oh my gosh, it's Jan from The Office. What? <laughs> that is, that's like literally Jan from The Office. Just anime style. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know her. I don't have any bimbos among my acquaintances. Nah, she's waving at the guy behind me. I told you, I don't know her. Probably selling Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> I was just joking about that earlier. She's selling Girl Scout cookies. She's my dealer, but I already have enough, so... I said I have enough Girl Scout cookies. Either way, better not get too close. Let's get out of here. JB? <laughs> well, J stands for Jan, I know that. Uh, no, she's talking about a different Yuji. Ugh, what is that woman thinking? I'll explain later. Sorry, but go on ahead. Definitely a lone shark. She is my guardian, or ever my guarantor. I don't know that word. It's fine. Hurry up and take Machina back. I'll be right behind you. I'm just gonna say a quick hello. Uh, uh. Apparently not enjoying the way I'm shooting her off with my hands like a stray dog. Uh, Amine walks away with a sulky expression, shooting repeated glances over her shoulder. After watching Amine Makina disappear behind past the school gate, I screw up an irritated expression, scratch my head vigorously, and approach the blinding yellow bimbo mobile. <laughs> oh yes, this music again. Look, woman. Yeah. What do you want, Jan? Yeah, more or less. You enjoying pretending to be my guardian? Asako? Who's that? What did you come here for? She's our guardian, eh? Hmm. I don't know about that. Although I'm grateful that you're acting as a guarantor of my background, I don't need a guardian at my age. Kindly get lost. <laughs> Isn't that like, um, the oldest girl in Sound of Music, where she's like, I don't need, like, someone to look after me. If you think you can shut me up by bringing up my childhood, you've got another thing coming. I'll repeat the question. What did you come here for? If it's about work, I thought I had a break for the moment. This music is so good. <laughs> There's no problem at present. If you forced me to come up with one, you being here, it would top the list. It's going to be a pain in the ass to make up an excuse when I go back to the classroom. Don't increase my workload. I don't know what's going on with us and this woman or this weird organization, but whatever. 
I'll just go along for the ride. I'd prefer to avoid lying outright where possible. Lies are like colors. The more you pile up, the blacker things get. Get enough of that place and things turn just as black. Are you threatening me, Jan? After everything I've done for you. Did she kidnap him? Yeah, this is sounding a little bit like a kidnapping. <laughs> She's literally just threatening to kill me. I don't need you to tell me that. I'm handling this myself, which is precisely why I don't need you giving me surprises like this. <sighs> All of the characters suck in this, except Sachi. <laughs> She's the one real winner here. <laughs> what, are you serious? You really did just come to see me? <laughs> Maybe this is why it's violent and has gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I approve of this theory, Marty. This is now my theory as well. <laughs> ah, right, the cell phone. <laughs> We're just gonna get a gun holster, one which has a gun and two cell phones on it. Sorry, I'll make sure to keep it around from now on. Yeah, I think we were kidnapped by, like, a secret society. <laughs> I'm aware. I'm aware of that as well. I guess if they kidnapped us, though, why would we... We were on our own. We could have just deserted and ran off, but we still came here. I hate trains, as you know. I didn't bring my train pants. <laughs> this guy! <laughs> that kind that's standing right in front of you. Also, the walk was closer to 175 kilometers. その some kind of psychic? How did you read my thoughts? <laughs> kind of. No. Look, I do feel bad about that. I'll apologize nice and slowly over dinner next time, okay? So please leave. Okay, maybe it's not kidnapping. But there's definitely something weird going on. And there's the death threats again. Cool. I thought I was supposed to be a janitor. Understood. Orders received, Major Harudera. <laughs> Hey, stop saying, can I hit this guy just once with your eyes? <laughs> Please don't spread it around. It's a pain in the ass to have to bend a spoon every time I introduce myself. I do understand. Don't mind my jokes. I don't know if you raised me or if you're just technically my legal guardian. <laughs> What if your goal is you have to kill everyone? <laughs> it's like the opposite of Clonade. Instead of saving everyone, you have to kill them. I get that a lot. Hurry up and get going. You don't have the time to play around here either, do you? Also, I like her hair. She's got really nice long hair. You're right. My bad, JB. Yeah. I watch as JB turns around and climbs into her car. Her blonde hair is swinging behind her and waves. As she drives off, I receive a cell phone from my school bag. Or I retrieve a cell phone from my school bag. Although I'd pretended otherwise, I'd been carrying my work phone around just as ordered. It's a black low profile slide phone I received from JB specifically for company business. I slide the screen up, quickly input the unlock pin, and call up the main screen. Although it looks like a perfectly normal cell phone, any calls made from this machine pass through a special encrypted line. 
there's only one entry in the contacts. That single number is listed under JB, Julia Bardera. Naturalized name, Harudera Yuria. My direct supervisor at my part-time job. Okay, so Jan is our supervisor then. <laughs> if you're going to come, at least give me an advance warning. I click my tongue in irritation, slide the phone shut, and stuff it into my, the pocket of my uniform so I can respond instantly to any future contact. Harudera Yuria, alias JV. As the woman said herself, she's something of a pain in the ass. She'll go nearly half a year without a single call, and then suddenly, it's a brusque standby in the designated point, where, of course, she has some incredibly troublesome job waiting to push on me. No, it's almost better when there's actually a job. Sometimes she leaves me at the rendezvous point for more than an hour without any contact. And then when I finally get the call I've been sitting around waiting for, it's a curt situation resolved, and I go right back home again. Are we... Are we James Bond? Are we, like, a secret agent? I know we're only in high school. Maybe we're actually not, like, 18. Maybe we are just pretending to be a high schooler. Well, I do get a travel fee deposited in my account just for heading to the standby point, so I suppose it's not a complete fool's errand in that sense, but... Sometimes I can't help but feel like my time on the surf isn't being spent efficiently. It's something of a behind-the-scenes part-time job, and the work would be troublesome to explain it to others if they asked. Of course, it's also not the kind of job I can just casually quit when I want to. We also could be an assassin. That's also true. That's if we're, like, the bad guy. <laughs> More importantly, this is a position that I inherited from my master. I wouldn't walk away even if I could. Well then, how should I explain this to Amine and company? I don't think I'll be able to pass her off as a, co as a cookie peddler after all. <laughs> I passed through Muhammad Academy's school gate, directing, dragging myself along on heavy feet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still alive. As expected, the instant I show my face in the classroom, Aminate jumps all over me. Most of my classmates are gathered on the far side of the room, apparently having watched me from the window. And as I enter, they're all looking at me with questions in their eyes. Blondi? Naturally, Amine is the one who steps forward to interrogate me, as if declaring herself the representative of the class. That said, the rest of the group doesn't seem to be disinterested either. Makin is staring at me with a dazed expression, and Sachi's clutching her hands together in front of her chest, waiting for my words with bated breath. As for Michiru, for some reason, she's glaring at me like I kicked her puppy. I don't know, Chris, what I'm getting myself into. But it's got good music. Sakaki, on the other hand, is sitting primarily in her seat, reading a book as if to announce she's above such fans, but... Judging from the way she hasn't turned the page once since I came in, she's probably I've probably got her attention as well. <laughs> I told you already, didn't I? She's my superior for my part-time job. Joshi. Joshi ka. Joshi ne. Yuji kun. Baito nan ka shite ru. Yes, I, I help sell Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, I lost both my parents when I was a kid, so I have to earn my own living expenses. Donna baito nano? It's a little difficult to summarize, but, well, I get rid of garbage, or crawl into various places and take care of the cleaning. It's what you call dirty work. Okay, yeah, we are either a secret agent or an assassin. <laughs> and they didn't pick up on any of that. Oh, that's right, because they can't actually see the double quotes. That's right, but she's on the management side, so she doesn't get her hands dirty. JB. JB? Her real name is Harudera Yuria. JB's a pet name. Definitely! She's not a naturalized citizen. I think she's originally German? Don't really remember. I pull out the chair from my seat, drop my bag on top of the desk with a deliberately loud thump. <laughs> I'm just a simple cowpoke. <laughs> Alright, see ya, Chris. <laughs> Questioning over now. If you've satisfied your curiosity, then go sit down. Class is going to start. Just as I speak, the first bell rings, and Makina and Sachi hurry back to their seats. But the large woman, who's been interrogating me, her expression still smoldering with irritation, pulls out the chair from the seat in front of mine and sits down heavily. Stop being nosy! What? Spit out, then! That's your big question? <laughs> what a joke. 
She is coming on to us real hard. Don't stick your nose in my face. You've got a mustache she's starting there. <laughs> yeah, just screwing of you. Sounds fun. Give it a try. Oh, and his punch is slow and lacking in serious intent. I dodge it easily with a slight swaying of movement of my upper body. Think this over calmly. Do I look like a man who could be in a relationship? <laughs> well, you are the protagonist of a dating sim, so I'm pretty sure you could be in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> her getting undressed in her room wasn't the tip-off. It was her asking if we have a girlfriend. She just keeps coming on harder and harder, honestly. Uh, Amine stares into my eyes as if searching for the truth. Well, yeah. What is? Well... So this question finally came up. On paper, I was studying abroad in Canada, or some similar lie they came up with for my forged personal history. But if they start pushing into that to that story, this will just drag on. Answering somewhat honestly now could make for less trouble down the line anyway. Before I came here, I guess I was a freeloader of sorts. Himo? If you want to make it sound fancier, maybe a gigolo? I was being supported by an unrelated older woman. No, she's a friend of the other woman. I started mooching off of her after the first one died. <laughs> In exchange, she worked me brutally hard on the job. She doesn't have anything to complain about. Is that how that works? I don't think so. Amine shuts her eyes, slaps her hand on her forehead, and heaves a heavy sigh. Right. I'll admit I don't quite understand why that's the main point here, but I guess this stuff is on the minds of girls at this age. If you try to force perspective onto everything, you'll lose sight of the bigger picture. Although she doesn't look entirely satisfied by my response, Amine mutters a brief, well, all right. Rises from the chair, and then heads back into her own seat. I watch until she finally sits down, and then quickly turn to look behind me. No, no, no. Oh yeah, you're here, hi. Immediately behind me, I find a bright red Michiru staring at their back at me. Were you listening? <laughs> oh man, this is still by far the best sprite of the game. Crossing her arms tightly in front of her chest, her face bright red, Michiru babbles frantically. In response, I thrust out my right hand in an energetic thumbs up. Nice sundere, Michiru. If you don't want to talk about something, you should make it awkward to ask. Based on that theory, I tried spicing things up a little more than the reality, but who knows how much of it they believed. Of course, it's true that my parents died when I was still a kid, that I was picked up by an older woman, my master, and that I lived off the money she earned. You bet this is an anime, Marty? <laughs> After my master's death, I did get work from her friend JB in order to keep earn my keep. On top of that, it's thanks to her vouching for me that I'm able to attend a normal school like this in the first place. Huh. Now that I think about it, I didn't change the facts much at all. But then, the more you focus on constructing believable lies, the less they tend to work. When you stick more or less to the truth, you end up convincing people no matter how absurd the story sounds. A promising start. Would be a bit of an overstatement, but I think we can work with this. We're at the schoolyard, folks! Oh boy. No matter what sort of life you're living, you'll run into people who just won't listen to what you have to say. When words didn't get through, the easiest alternative is beating them into submission. Certainly a bit of a rough solution, but when you're dealing with another man, it's at least an option. But when you're dealing with a woman, let alone a shrimp of a girl who doesn't come up to your shoulder, it's a different story. If you start swinging your fists around out of irritation under those circumstances, anyone would call it bullying the weak. It's a bad style. Leaves an unpleasant taste in your mouth, too. What's called for in such situations is per perseverance and patience. 
They're always saying we live in an age of technological wonders. So I've been waiting for someone to invent a machine that you can stick on your back and switch to zen-like, instantly granting yourself infinite self-control. Oh, there is an anime of this. <laughs> but despite the clear market potential, the world isn't yet such a convenient place. Well, no big deal. I'm pretty used to endurance tests by now. Oh, hey, we haven't seen much of you, eh, Makina? It's been five minutes since I spotted Hirisu Makina wandering aimlessly around the campus, and I called out, what are you up to, in a casual tone. On the bright side, she reacted to my voice and stopped dead in her tracks instead of fleeing. But the next step is proving a little more problematic. The girl's just staring up at my face. She hasn't said a word. Can you not speak Japanese? <sighs> Silent as always, Makina shakes her head back and forth in denial, apparently having understood my question. Not to sound like a downer, how long am I going to stream? Not for too much longer. Like, once I get to the next nice breaking point, I'll probably stop. Are you afraid of me, baby? <sighs> Her silence continues, and this time there's neither confirmation nor denial. It seems unlikely that she didn't understand the question, which would mean that this one is in, in uncertain territory, somewhere between yes and no, as far as I can guess. Also, I want to say that there has not been a single dialogue box decision that we've had to make yet. Stark contrast to Clannad. I'm repeating myself, but this sort of communication takes a lot of patience and persistence. I try to consciously consider things from Machina's point of view. A transfer student with an unclear background, what's more a man 178 centimeters high. From the perspective of Machina, who I'd guess to be around 140 centimeters, it might well be a little intimidating to have me towering over her. For the moment, I crouch down so that my eyes are level with hers. It seemed like you were wandering around the grounds. Are you looking for something? Makina speaks a single word in a quiet voice and once again shakes her head in denial. Then what were you doing? That's a point of some interest to me, but well, if you get down to it, wherever she is and whatever she's doing is her own business, I suppose. I'm not a policeman, and I don't have any reason to drag it out of her. In this case, it might be best to find some words to wrap this up cleanly, give her a friendly goodbye, and let this timid creature be on her way. But just as I reach this conclusion, Makina slowly moves her hand to the rear of her skirt, grabs something with her stubby fingers, and pushes it in front of my eyes. Hmm? What's this thing? At a glance, the item in Makina's small hand is a toy-like object roughly the size of an egg, with an LCD screen buried into the center. <laughs> she is a, she is a, a Tamagotchi, eh? What's that? On a closer examination, there's some unknown life form or monster more closely resembling a chick displayed in blocky pixels on the central LCD. If it makes me feel better, this girl is older than eight. She probably is, but she looks eight, and she acts eight, and she sounds eight. So... Honestly, that does make me feel a little better. <laughs> Still hope it's not a dating option. It seems to be programmed with some cheap animations, about three patterns or so. Ah. Come to think of it, I remember reading a news article about this a few years ago. After developing the smallest free-axis ge <laughs> geomagnetism sensor in the world at the time, a certain company fed that technology into a children's electronic toy, which then became an explosive hit among grade schoolers. It's a penometer, right? One of those things where the pet grows up faster the more you walk? Uh, oh, she actually smiled at us. Nodding her head, Makino returns the pedometer in her hand to her waist. In other words, she wasn't looking for anything in particular. Her wandering itself was the objective. Walking's a good thing, since it's an aerobic exercise without too much strain on the joints. And if you're going to walk anyway, having some sort of visible result for the effort might make it more worth more while. Makina points at the school gate as she speaks. I see. It makes sense that she's want to avoid crowded places, given her extreme shyness. That would restrict her strolls to pacing around the school grounds, which would quickly get repetitive. So the digital pet serves as a distraction from the boredom, most likely. You like taking walks? Mm. Sorta, is it? Well, walking for fun at this age might be a little odd. Seems more like the hobby of an old man. You have any other interests, like reading, for example? Read any books lately? Mm. Manga's fine too, whatever. To tell the truth, I'd already heard about from Amine that Makina often reads books, and reading is a hobby of mine as well. I think it's a decent common topic for starters. In response to my question, Makina holds her right index finger to her chin and mumbles, hmm, while gazing up at the sky. 
Is that like the kind you get at the dentist's office? Quiz, huh? Was it interesting? Huh? Life threatening to observe with the naked eye? What kind of death ray weapon is that? And a suite of all things? Some new tech from the West? <laughs> Just looking at it is dangerous. Would mean it's probably some variety of optical weapon? Something like an X ray possessing mass, or some sort of beam saber style light kill based killing tool. No, wait. Just seeing it is dangerous. Some sort of super weapon that radiates a pulse to the receptors of the eyeball, using a flickering pattern to stimulate the brain cells and trigger accelerated apoptosis. Hold on. Hold it. This fiend is a sweet, right? A sweet? Where the hell do we get that from there? All I'm getting is some sort of chocolate pastry shooting out a mysterious beam of light. Pew, pew, pew. Don't know. I give up. What's the answer? Mitarashidango. What? Mitarashidango. Mitarashinunoya. Wow. See and die? Ah, I get it. I missed that angle. Candy. <laughs> My... <laughs> this was awkward. Hmm? Yeah, sorry to hold you up. Without even a buy or later, Makina leaves the area at a trot, as if fleeing for me. It doesn't seem like Xiaorit hates me, though. How long have you been there? How would she even hide? She's, she's a giant woman. What do you mean by the opposite? Trying to not be disliked. Huh. Hmm. True enough, I remember seeing her rushing around brandishing a cicada and cackling that first time. If that's her normal state, then the way she behaves in front of me would certainly be a product of deliberate self-restraint. But... I think it could be interpreted as simple fear as well. What makes you say that? Hmm, yeah. When I was a kid, there was a time I'd been surrounded by unfamiliar adults and found myself on the brink of tears. When one of the adults stopped down to talk to me face to face, I immediately got emotionally attached. Looking back, I feel like shouting, you sure got attached to an outrageous person, or complaining about what an idiot I was, but... And now she's glued to you, or something like that. I-I feel that! I like playing alone. Hmm. Maybe she's playing by herself because she understands that. Please tell me she doesn't actually meow. Getting more disturbed? A cat, I see. I don't plan to force her to be friends if she doesn't want to be, but yeah, I'll try to avoid being hated. If I avoid unnecessary contact, I shouldn't inspire any hatred or come to hate anyone myself. In exchange, I won't be liked or come to like anyone either. 
Maintaining emotional distance along the appropriate lines is an essential but extremely difficult aspect of forming efficient interpersonal relationships. Of course, there are always these careless puppy dog eyes types who will leap into your arms wagging their tails right from the start. Well, just thinking about how beautiful you are. Wow. Alright, Amine, close your eyes. Are we gonna just snub her big time? Her chest swelling with some ridiculous expectation, Amine closes her eyes and thrusts at her lips as instructed. Moving quickly and silently, I make. <laughs> we totally just snubbed her! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Moving quickly and silently, I make good my getaway, leaving the girl to her foolishness. <laughs> yes! I see. Makina may have the right idea. Leaving out later or goodbye entirely and silently running away is certainly less troublesome. Don't take it the wrong way, Amine. It's not that I hate you. I'm just trying to avoid being hated by you. Alright, that's where we're going to end the stream then. Seems like a good spot to take a break. Uh uh, no, 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 we're saving. Oh, boom! That It was that easy. Sweet. <laughs> Apparently this doesn't have 99 folders like Klana does. Well, you can't say that this game wasn't an interesting <laughs> start. Wow. On the whole, I think I'm liking it. There are definitely some very uncomfortable parts of this, though. Uh, wow. <laughs> people in this act very differently than I would in these situations. But, hope people enjoyed watching this. I'll try streaming this at the same time as Clonade. I probably won't be streaming it the next two weeks just because of holidays. But I wanted to at least get a feel for this game before the new year and see if I actually would be interested in playing all of it. Still don't know if I'll do every route, but I at least want to keep playing for the time being. It seems interesting, and it's got gorgeous music and great graphics. So, hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, and God bless.